I remembered the other night just what my introduction was to open intelligence and it was it was quite simply putting on a, putting an mp3 uh, earbud in my ear pressing play and I heard Candace asked the question, uh, what's looking? And that was incredible. <laughs> I was like, well, that, that, that's ridiculous. Why haven't, hasn't anyone ever asked me that question before? And, and what uh, a totally in, in incredibly and, and empowering question that was for me to receive. And I immediately relaxed. <laughs> There was an uh, instinctive relaxation there because I, I knew I instinctively that uh, I couldn't find the answer through my ordinary logic reason. I couldn't say, oh, it's my eyes <laughs> or it's that thing between in my skull that's looking. If I really, really was honest with myself and looked at that, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you what, what, what's looking, but I could continue listening and instinctively comprehend just what is looking. And, and this is what open intelligence is. And we can each right now instinctively recognize open intelligence in our experience because it's always on. So right now just stop thinking. Pause any descriptions that are occurring. And what we see is that what's looking it's still there. This basic alertness, this, this cognizance, this power to perceive, this ability, this incredible ability to experience is always on and this is open intelligence and it's always on regardless of whether we're, we're, we're stopping thinking or, or we're the greatest thinkers on earth. We're um, eradicating all thoughts or we're, we're thinking about um, what we're going to have for dinner. And so this, this fundamental intelligence, this open intelligence, this common intelligence to us all is, is very, very powerful, I've come to know in my experience. To recognize that within my experience and to prioritize that. So that was what I was uh, supported, you could say, in the Balanced View training. There is a distinct, ridiculous amounts of support I found wherever I go in my life there's there just seems to be someone there saying okay why don't you rely on open intelligence <laughs> why don't you look at your experience right now and and utilize uh, your incredible intelligence rather than just emphasizing those descriptions that occur and so what, what we term in the Balance View Training as all of those descriptions that do occur, like all of your thoughts and emotions and sensations, we just simply call them data. So everything that we can perceive, data. And so throughout my day, I can just tell you about my day. Uh, I wake up in the morning, I, I like uh, to eat cornflakes uh, for breakfast. Um, I you know, I, I, I um, yeah, I chop up a bit, a bit of fruit as well and put them on my cornflakes. Sometimes some tahini, and and then um, I, I'm living just here and in this room. So I, I hear some sweeping going on. You know, there's some sweeping out, out outside my window, and that's amazing. There's people already coming to prepare this open meeting space, and and so what? That's within five minutes. So much da data. Thoughts, emotions and sensations. All day these thoughts and emotions and sensations coming. I'm just an ordinary everyday person really. But what I see in my experience, there's something that's become totally extraordinary and totally incredible and it's not unique to me because I know it's the experience of so many others here and I know it's available for everyone on the earth <laughs> and, and beyond. And, and, uh, but what, I, what I'm experiencing is everyday, ordinary, everyday life itself, eating my cornflakes. <laughs> totally exalted, totally incredible, <laughs> totally, totally amazing. Because what, before my experience, okay, eating my cornflakes three years ago, or not three years ago, I think it's about five years ago now, 
I'd wake up in the morning and I was at university, so, oh goodness, I've got to go to university today. Why am I doing this? Why? <laughs> you know, I thought, I'm following my passions and it's so painful and I've got to talk about this. I, I did that thing on the weekend that I really regret and, um, <laughs> and then I've got to talk to this person about this thing and I'm doing this uh, collaboration with this other thing and I, uh, I really, really don't want to speak to them and... Um, Wow, I can't wait for Friday. Friday's going to be great. And, <laughs> and, and, and so, and then all of a sudden my cornflakes are finished and uh, oh wow, okay, um, now on to the next thing. And, and so this was my day-to-day -day life experience and it was really, really tiring. It was, um, yeah, it, it, this is how I just learnt to relate to myself. I, I, I learnt about data, basically. I was a professional in, in rearranging all of the data. In, in, see, in focusing on data only. <coughs> and so what an incredible day that was when I, when I was posed that question, just what is looking? What is perceiving all of this? And to be empowered to really, really see that in my experience, to that, that this is a stable ground and it's an empowered ground, it's a powerful ground to be and it's an optimal way to utilize my mind. So, in relation to how can um, thoughts like irritation, boredom, boredom, anger, feeling incredible heartache and pain and, and feeling like um, we've lost everything, how can these be ultimately beneficial? Well, I, I saw there in my experience, and I see in my everyday life experience, that these things just don't, don't go away, for one. That this is not about a, tr a training that, that uh, gets rid of these data streams for us. Because then, you know, whenever it would come up in my experience, then I've just totally failed, completely failed. Because they're always bound to come up, these kind of data streams, whether now or or when I'm on my deathbed or seeing other people die, which is inevitable. So, so that's the, getting to know that incredible loss right now is, is such an, a profound and, and um, a beautiful thing. So how can they be of benefit? How can each and every moment be, be totally of benefit to me and to other people? Well, I can just, just share in my own experience, for instance, uh, data like heart, heartbreak. It's complete heartbreak. I, I mean, knowing heartbreak before relying on open intelligence and before having the support of the four mainstays, which is the support of short moments of open intelligence, short moments of what is relaxed and at ease about us all the time, uh, relying on a trainer, and relying on a community and relying on a training a text and media. So that's the four mainstays. Heartbreak before the four mainstays was always about uh, really avoiding it, hoping that it won't come up, doing everything out of my, in my means possible to, to arrange the situation so that if I felt it, um, that, that that wouldn't last very long. Um, heartbreaking myself or others and I'm just using one specific example, but this is for all of my ex experience, basically. Coming to, to know these incredible and, and um, potent experiences with the support of the mainstays. Well, first and foremost, heartbreak, which I did experience uh, after about, you know, one or two years relying on, on open intelligence. Firstly, it, it bu built that incredible uh, trust and reliance with my trainer. It, it gave me the opportunity to really, really connect with someone who has experienced this before and could show me how this could be beneficial in my experience. So first and foremost, that was uh, how it was greatly beneficial. And secondly, I think it responds to, to maybe not telepathy, but uh, knowing, what, uh, knowing just where everyone is at, basically knowing where I'm at fully, I could see that I know where everyone is at when I come to see them and when I come to speak with, with people. When I know uh, deeply that this, this heartbreak is not my own special heartbreak and, and uh, 
yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all um, just here and it's all mine and and um, yeah, just really really emphasizing that uh, um, some um, yeah someone really suffering or I don't know, but um, just coming to really see that this is felt by by so many people either right at this moment or or um, yeah throughout the day how many people just experience heartbreak how many people around the world when I was uh, I studied uh, I studied acting and uh, one of the things that made a really good actor was you know just to know well that, that was what I, what I was told was to to know how, how your your um, what your character is is thinking and 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 um, to have a wide range of characters that you can be um, and, uh, and and I was told in, in, in many many of my directions what I was given uh, the direction just to really you know you have to know more about how what uh, this character you're portraying how they tick I was like how do I know what how you know how do I know this how, how do I know what this character is thinking how do I know what this this person is doing and and, and how, how do I find out how this character is is ticking and and coming to know this training it was it was really remarkable because I not only knew I, I started to, to prioritize just getting to know how I tick <laughs> just getting to know all of these appearances getting to know them fully and completely getting to know them fully and completely I saw that I was getting to know not only myself but every single person every single person because I just see, see that we just operate in the same way there's open intelligence the ability to choose open intelligence and there's data occurring all sorts of data and and so that was incredible because there I, f I found that I could I could just be anyone <laughs> I, I could be anyone basically in my day-to-day -day life all sorts of things appear and arise and I can I choose moment to moment I choose do I want to emphasize this do I want to be that that specific person there or do I want to rely on what is common unique profound, all equalizing about us, open intelligence. And so that was really, really profound actually. All of those horrible people over there, that, that wasn't me. I said, wow, I, I have those thoughts sometimes. What, what would I be if I emphasized those? Well, I, I could actually do that. <laughs> That was deeply hum humbling, that was deeply uh, grounding and, and, and so there's the solution. The solution to all problems, it's the solution to, to, to um, peace basically, quite simply. The solution to world peace. What a bold statement. And I'm happy to be, be bold about that because I see it very, very clearly. That if I can be comfortable with every experience that is occurring in myself and with other people, then, then you can too. Everyone can. And what happens when we're comfortable? I, I can give an example. When I, I became comfortable with being really awkward, like I can make any situation really, really awkward. And <laughs> really, I can. It's really good. Um, we can have a conversation later and, and, and I can show you how awkward I could, could pro probably make the situation. <laughs> but what I found was when I became really comfortable with my awkwardness, which my really, really awkward way of being, what does that do to awkwardness? It's just not awkward anymore. <laughs> the beneficial potency of this awkwardness really sp sprang forth. So I, I, I no longer emphasized that and more enjoyed relating with people just openly, openly and wholeheartedly.